When I first discovered the internet, I was very, I would say, um, shy. People often think that that is a, uh, me being, me joking, but I was very shy when I was younger. And a, a series of, of experiences online allowed me to kind of slowly, I call it a digital striptease. I would expose something vulnerable about myself and discovered that all I got back was, was affirmation and love from people. And it was this really amazing process of the more that I felt that I, I exposed and the more vulnerable I was, the more I felt that I was enveloped in, in comfort and love and, and actually was empowered by that. And so over time, I went from being very insecure online to being, well, I actually went to a period where I was a little bit obnoxious. And that's when I had a site called cockybastard.com and really was very much, look at me, look at me, look at me. And initially I was drawn to pink because it was a anti-macho statement. By embracing pink, I was forcing people to question, you know, am I gay, am I a sissy? It certainly is not a, a, a traditionally macho masculine thing. And I don't see myself as a macho masculine guy, but I also don't see myself as a non-man. You know, I'm a man. I, there's, why can't I do and be whatever I want? And so by embracing pink, I was trying to overtly make people question surface judgments. And I see pink as having all the love feeling that red has, but without the aggression. And so pink is a perfect color to represent hugs. And then the more I've gotten into it, pink has also got this kind of unity feeling because everybody, no matter what color you are on the outside, everybody's pink on the inside. Hug Nation was the result of a number of things kind of all stirring around in, in my life. One being the internet and it kind of becoming really important and me seeing how important this could be for the world, but also seeing that too many people were only seeing the web as a tool for selling things. At the same time, I was getting involved with Burning Man and this kind of alternate community and a way of seeing people as all connected. And while this was all happening, 9-11 happened. And then, so in the wake of 9-11, there was first this surge of, of camaraderie, world camaraderie, this, this just really powerful, amazing feeling of like, wow, maybe this is gonna snap us into this world family mentality. But very quickly, we lost that, and we started going into this aggressive us versus them, and the news started being very much us, them, us, them, us, them. And, the internet as this tool was showing us that wasn't the case at all. We have this, finally we have this tool to actually interact and see people one-on-one -on -one throughout the world. We actually had the ability to talk to people, individuals all over the world. And it wasn't an us then. There's only us. And so we tried to use these internet tools as a way to once a week get together and just simply practice and say and acknowledge that we're all more alike than we are different and the world would rather hug you than hurt you. So we said, well, Let's have a moment every week where we get in front of our webcams and just give ourselves a little hug and acknowledge to one another that regardless of what you see on the news, you know, we're all connected. And then after doing that for a while, um, it kind of grew and grew and then it became something that, that I eventually invited my grandfather to be a part of. My grandfather's name was Champion Elroy Shikles, and then when he was in his mid-80s, he changed it to Caleb, which gives you a little bit of an idea of the kind of guy he was. He was 80, and he said, you know what, I'm going to start a new chapter of his life. And he walked the walk, really. I mean, he was, he was a Christian man, very much so, but what was awesome was that very early in my life, he recognized that my path was different. He sent me a, um, a reply to my Christmas card I sent him one year. I sent him a Christmas card with me on the beach, like jumping in the air in, in excitement. And he wrote me back and he said, thank you so much for your that picture of you at worship. And it was a really significant thing because it, it showed me that he was not attached to his worldview or his spiritual view, but he acknowledged that I could have my own. And so we were able to then kind of build a relationship where we each could bond in the realm of values, even if we disagreed on specific beliefs. I didn't really get to know him until after my grandmother passed and he was in a retirement village. At that point he was 
as he called it, he was living in his cocoon. He called his little dorm room that he lived in in a retirement village. And I would go visit him. And uh, it was wonderful to be able to introduce him to the internet where he would hunt and peck and reply to all the emails he got from people as he was introduced to this, this new generation of people. And a new generation of people was able to really glean this amazing wisdom from, from this wonderful old man. Every vibration that comes out of your mouth yes. is going through the internet and vibrating out oh my. all over the world. Isn't that amazing? If we only learn to love one another. After my grandfather passed, um, I actually bought a 24-foot RV, painted it pink, and then had wings painted on the side to match my favorite photo of him. And we had his ashes mixed into the paint job. So now as we go to festivals and travel around and do charity things in the Hugmobile, his energy is always a part of everything we do. The Hug Nation vibe and his energy continues on. A physical hug is when two people join and their individual specific identities dissolve. And so the me dissolves into a we in that moment. And if you've ever gone into a hug and, and, and held that embrace for a few seconds, it's gonna be a really powerful experience where you have a really powerful feeling of connection. And so Hug Nation is trying to take that same concept of ego dissolving, surrendering to a we, on a grand scale. My role is simply to show up, have integrity, align myself with love, and then whatever happens from that is exactly as it should. And so then the results of that, I mean, the, the cool thing is that as I've become less and less attached to making things happen or achieving things, I actually have made more things happen and achieved more things. It's kind of, I, I have an, I, the philosophy of Love more, fear less, float more, steer less. And as I surrender and float more, the cosmic streams tends to bring me to the places I need to be, introduce me to people I need to know, and have opportunities pop up that I never could have had before.